Hi, I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. Welcome to Trial and Error, where I take a look at a game or a game demo. Uh, I usually play it pretty badly and give you my thoughts along the way. This time I'm taking a look at D Divinity Original Sin. I'm totally down for a straight-up turn-based RPG. I'm hoping this one will be just the thing for me to veg on my couch to. Okay, difficulty selection. Um, prefer story and exploration over being challenged in combat. I'm going to do Explorer mode, but I'm hoping that if the combat's too easy, I can switch it mid-game to Classic mode. We'll see. Dude, there are, like, a ton of character class options. Holy crap. This is too much, but awesome for a second playthrough, I'm sure. Uh, I'll just stick to the starting spells they give me. Really? Bald? Bald is not one of my choices? You give me a bald portrait, but I can't choose bald as one of my... That's weird. Oh! All right, combat in Divinity Original Sin is played in rounds. Everything you do in combat costs action points, which you receive each round. Your turn ends when you have no AP left, okay? Oh, that's much better. Okay, so I can go and hunt him down with the left stick and select him that way, or I can just cycle through enemies with the left and right button. That's a lot cooler. Nice. And the text could be just a little bit larger. The interface just taking a little bit of getting used to, but I'm, I'm starting to understand what they're getting at. It'd be nice if we shared a common inventory. It's a little clunky having to hand everything over this way. Nice. Take a shot. Oh, man. So I didn't quite have a line of sight or something? I feel like I have to kind of rehearse a little bit some of the controls. You can get where you want in the menus, but it's just a matter of, okay, so I have to hit left L2, and that brings up my options for my guys, and then I use the left stick to point to the guy that I want, but then if I, then I need to let go of L2 to switch. Like, I can't let go of the left stick and it'll work. So the sequence is, <laughs> for switching guy, is L2, left stick, release L2. L2, left stick, release L2. <laughs> so there's just a few sequences like that, like pulling up this menu with the right trigger and then using left to go where I want and then release right trigger to go into that menu. It'll just take, you know, I, I have crappy hand-eye coordination, so they, you know, there's accessibility to all the menus I think that I want. I just kind of have to get my hands used to the sequence. Okay, if I want to switch, there's not just one button to push to switch to a new guy. That would be nice if it was just one of these bumper buttons to cycle through who I wanted to be. But instead, I gotta go L2, left stick, release L2. L2, left stick, release L2. <laughs> Which I'm sure will become natural pretty quickly, I hope. I met a trio of strange cult-like figures before the entrance of this tomb. They seemed to have a precious stone in their possession. Your tricks will not save you from retribution, deceiver. Okay. Do it. Boom! That was cool. Oh, nice. That was awesome. Oh, cool. Okay, I'm starting to see how the combat can really move at a pretty brisk pace with the L1 and R1 buttons allowing you to cycle through the enemies that you're targeting. Uh, you can just go, you know, cycle, you know, select, attack, select, attack, you know. And so despite it being a pretty tactical game, if you know what you want to do, you can cycle through things pretty, cycle through combat pretty quickly. I still remember the days when your kind swung from branches and plucked the vermin out of their neighbor's fur. Okay, some more, uh, more macro-evolutionary speech in, uh, geek gaming and entertainment. No shocks there. 
I wish I had some dialogue options that were just a little bit darker, had a little bit more of an attitude. I want like the get out of my way option here. This is a cooperative dialogue. It allows you to roleplay discussions between the two main characters. I don't need an escort, especially not a drunken one. Back off or face me. Are you mad? You'd kill legionnaires? Let's just go to the wizard peacefully. Whoa! Is Elderass not my guy too? That's not what Elderast would say. Win a series of rock, paper, scissors matches to convince the other party. It was a wicked thing we did. Do I need to change his AI? I thought I made them both the same personality type, so I don't know why Elderast is acting all holier than thou and sensitive. He should be just as cold and heartless as Vincent is. Maybe I should just roleplay as him for a while. Bring out his heartless side myself. The menus are just slightly slow to respond. I would like to be cycling through these steps of opening, grabbing, closing, you know, a little bit faster, and they're just a little bit slow to respond. Ooh, that was cool. Oh wow, I can quick save in the middle of combat. That's cool. There are a few things like the portraits during dialogue. It would be nice if all the little details were just enlarged just a little bit. All right, now one of the things that drew my attention to this game from the very beginning was the potential for it to work well via remote play on the Vita. So let's see how that works out. Huh. Okay. It appears that I'm not able to access the right and left trigger functionality using the back touch pads on the Vita. I just exited out of the game and tried a different game to make sure that it wasn't a problem with my Vita, but no, the back touchpad functionality for right and left trigger working just fine on the Mad Max video game, but I come back to this and I'm, it's not even registering in this game that I'm, uh, that I'm using the right and left trigger via the back touchpad. Uh, which basically destroys the entire functionality of this game on Vita. Now, whether or not that's unique to my experience, I'd be very curious to know if there's someone out there watching this and uh, you are not having the same problem, I'd love to hear from you. Or if you are having the same problem, it'd be good to know. That's a real shame, because this, in so many ways, is the kind of game that you could really enjoy on a Vita, since it's not all twitchy. I do wish my characters could move a little bit faster. When your camera angle is so often above the action like this, at least for me, it can kind of take me out of the potential intensity of exploring the environment. I feel kind of removed from it already. And so if you add a slow pace to that, then at the end of a hard day of work, you know, this isn't the kind of game I'm probably going to just kind of veg out to. It's one that's going to require me to be a little bit more awake and alert and have mental energy to, to really dedicate to, uh, to focusing on it. Intervention of fate. Yes. Oh, man. Fate has put me on this very spot, so I may tell you all about a most intriguing opportunity indeed. Oh my gosh. Okay, the voice acting, I really like the voice acting in the term I, I mean it's quality voice acting. But I'm just getting a little bit impatient. I'm kinda like, okay, let's hurry this along and so I kinda wanna read ahead. I think what I'll probably do is turn off the voice acting so that I can get through the text a little bit faster. I appreciate that they went to the trouble of putting voice acting in the in so much of the game with the enhanced edition. Um, but a lot of times I'm just not gonna be patient enough to enjoy it. I don't like how they're kind of like taking control of the role-playing of these characters when I'm not directly controlling them. The uh, AI personality type I chose for him was Judge, which maybe I thought, maybe, maybe that means he was going to be a little bit more obsessed with justice. I don't know, I wasn't sure what the whole AI choice was, but I'm guessing that's what's affecting this right now, and now I'm regretting that I chose Judge for both of them. I disagree. I, for one, am content with my station. No, you're not content with your station, Vincent. You crave power, just like Elderass does. I have no idea... Even if he's, like, someone that's concerned with justice, maybe that's what the Judge AI was for, that wouldn't mean he would necessarily be content with his station. Maybe as a judge or someone who cares about justice, he's like frickin' Batman and wants to take it upon himself to bring about justice. That's almost a game breaker for me to twice in a row have their AI controlled version of one of my characters screw up my intended pl role playing plans. Because I can't imagine wanting to invest my time in 
60, 40, even 20 hours of a role-playing game if I'm not going to be allowed to make the choices that I want to make. I mean, that's the whole point of a freaking role-playing game. Okay, so I just did some research on this, and actually I didn't have to go any further than my logbook here. Looking under tutorial, it says, AI personality determines if your character has an opinion of his or her, his or her own, meaning they will make certain dialogue decisions without your input. If you're not sure, leave it on no AI. Now, it sure is possible that something, this message popped up when I was generating my character. I don't remember that at all. But either way, don't make the same mistake I did. If you want to actually make choices, in Divinity Original Sin, choose no AI. Once I'm done recording, you better believe I'm starting back from scratch, brand new characters, because I don't see any way here for me to change that about my character, change their AI options. N none of that is in here. Oh, this is interesting. I've just run into some kind of religious guy by the name of Francis, um, who's telling me about... Uh, his religious beliefs and he says by following her instructions this being the goddess that he worships and becoming initiated into the one way we can each of us live on for a span greater than the number of stars that twinkle within the goddess's right eye now this is interesting because what he's suggesting here is something that is uh, uh, exclusively true and the claims of the bible the claims of christianity uh, say that they are exclusively true now that doesn't mean that uh, that there's not truth found in other belief systems, but what it does mean is where other belief systems, other truth claims conflict with what the Bible teaches, those other truth claims are incorrect and the Bible is correct and reliable. Um, and that kind of worldview, this kind of the idea that truth is exclusively, you know, absolute uh, and not relative, uh, is very unpopular, and so I'm wondering, as I continue conversing with this guy, if he's going to um, be portrayed negatively in some way. That's usually the case when you have a character that uh, believes that truth is exclusive when it comes to religious matters. They're usually portrayed as, uh, as arrogant, um, or mean-spirited, or rude, or uh, hypocritical or something like that. So, uh, so this is the first example, and especially in fantasy. I mean, that's like, especially if there's like an organized church, usually that there's a very negative, uh, connotation for that, anybody associated with that belief system. So, um, we'll see as we move forward what this guy's like. All right, so tell me about yourself. What's in a name, dear friend? For we all begin equal in the conduit's eyes, and only through great deeds may enter into her inner ring. That's interesting. So we all start out as equal in the conduit's eyes, but it's a works-based system. I think a lot of people have the uh, impression that in Christianity, being good is what gets you into the presence of God for eternity. And actually, it's the reverse. It's just acknowledging, you know what? You are a holy God, and you're creating a perfect eternity, and I am clearly not uh, compatible with that. I need you to forgive me and rescue me and make me compatible with a perfect wonderful, uh, flawless existence for all of eternity. Um, so it's, so Christianity is really, to my knowledge, the, the one worldview, the one religious worldview that is not based on works and being good, getting you uh, into the presence of, of God. So tell me more about this conduit. She came from on high to we mortals and showed us the path to the goddess, where all living souls are naturally inclined. Okay, so this is something that's in common with uh, Christianity. And Jesus came from on high, we might say, and showed us the path to Yahweh, the God of the Bible. Um, the big question is, is this conduit actually synonymous with God, or is she something lesser? Usually when they riff on Christianity in some form or the Trinity in some form, there's like God and then there's like, they don't do a, a, a straight up riff on the Trinity. They, they, they would make the analogs of the Son and the Holy Spirit kind of lesser versions of God or something. She showed us that injury and malady need not mark the end of life, but that through her methods, so through deeds, we could ascend to greater life in service of the goddess. So again, it's very works-based as opposed to the gospel's promise that, no, listen, I did this for you, Jesus says. Uh, just, just trust me to take care of this, to forgive you, to deal with your sin. I'm here to, I'm, I am the rescuer, you know. 
Um, I am. That's what. That's what a savior is. It's one who rescues. Oh, he's walking. Oh, sneaky failed. Never mind. Hey, I'm not doing anything. Okay, now here's a conversation I just had with someone who is. Uh, now just joined my party after rescuing her. She says, Source Hunter, I have heard tales both grand and terrible about the world of humans. I myself was caged one moment and freed the next by your, our kind. Perhaps in time I will come to know my own kind as you have, and perhaps then I will decide for myself whether ours is a noble kind. So, again, we've got an example of fantasy as a, as a genre being used to explore some of these deeper issues of humanity, who we are. Are we basically good? Are we basically evil? What does that even mean to say basically? I'll be interested to see kind of where this goes and the worldview that the writers of the game uh, purposefully or unwittingly present to us. Okay, I'm kind of getting a sense of, of how the quest log works and and I like it. And turning off the voice acting too allows me to kind of get through dialogue a little bit faster as I kind of skim through what they're saying. Talk, talk, boom, hit the bullet points, get the quest log updated, and then I'll just refer to the quest log. I really do enjoy reading, but when I sit down to play a video game, I'm there to interact with a world, not to kind of be a passive reader. Ah, foo on you, Vincent! I'll not only dig up this grave, but bury you inside it too! Bite me! Yes, I win! We'll do as I say. Now shut up and dig up this grave! Oh, dang! <laughs> Holy crap! Your party has been defeated. We'll save often if you plan on digging up graves. All right, well, I've reloaded my game. I tried to get the blonde-haired lady to join the group again, but this time my AI-controlled Vincent didn't like the idea, so guess that's not happening. Select no AI. I'm getting the hang of the uh, the, the menus and the user interface. It, it was a little slow going at first, but I'm starting to kind of get into a groove with this. Whoa! Oh, crap! What <laughs> the crap just happened? What happened? Is, is this a dream? I don't think so. That stone, somehow it sent us flying into the stars. Yeah, the, the voice options were not super varied in this. They might have all been done. There was like a, a fighter, a rogue, and maybe a wizard voice option for each sex. And, uh, and I think they were all done by the same person, and they weren't really drastically different. All right, there's been a lot of talking here. Um, I wouldn't mind some combat again. Okay, now the forced AI of, of Elderast says, No matter how improbable, anything is possible. If the Weaver tells the truth, we have some serious work ahead of us. Now that's true, no matter how improbable... Well, I'm not sure that that's true, actually. That, that not literally everything is possible. I understand what, what people mean, but for example, you know, something cannot be A and not A at the same time. It is either A or it is not A. So not anything is possible, um, but I understand what we generally mean by that expression. No matter how improbable, anything is possible. Even so, I think that what we ought to be basing our life decisions on is what is most probable, what is most plausible. And yet sometimes we can avoid what's true by giving ourselves an alternative and telling ourselves that that alternative is possible. Well, it's possible that this, um, but what we don't really acknowledge is that, you know, that's just something that we kind of want to believe, that's something we want to pursue, when really at the end of the day what we ought to be uh, reacting to and what we ought to be allowing to guide our lives is what is most likely to be true given all of the available information. Ha <laughs> ha! Ow. Oh! <laughs> you don't seem to be doing that well. Flee by using the flea skill on your hotbar. I say, zap him! One more shot! We got him! Booyaka! Okay, so I've spent about five hours with the game now, and uh, it, it started off a little bit slow as I was just trying to figure out how to interact with the game, but I'm getting into a rhythm with it, and I'm starting to enjoy it. Combat is starting to speed up despite being turn-based, uh, and, uh, you know, on the uh, on the lowest difficulty setting, it's providing me with kind of that casual exploratory experience that I want, where it's it doesn't have to be deeply tactical, and these days, in the season of life I'm in, 
I don't want that at the end of the day. This game is far from blowing my mind. It's far from the kind of experience that I will be just chomping at the bit at the end of a workday to get back into. But it does scratch a number of itches that, uh, that I tend to have when it comes to RPG gaming. So yeah, I'm absolutely going to keep playing this one. Those are all my thoughts for now. Uh, I'd love to get yours in the comments below. Um, I hope that you'll join me for the uh, Extra Life Marathon 24-hour live stream that I'm, that I'm going to be doing on Saturday, November 7th from 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. Pacific time. Please do like, share, and subscribe if you like this video, want to share it, and want more videos like it. And then I hope you go on over to ChristianGeekCentral.com and join us there as we continue to geek out and seek the truth. ChristianGeekCentral.com